What is up, everybody, and how's it going? I'm Alex Goldstick, and you are listening to the Spring Forward Podcast. The Spring League season ended last Thursday, and Spring Forward and the rest of the Spring League staff now eagerly await to see where this year's participants will end up signing pro contracts. The news has already started trickling in, so keep an eye out on the Spring League social media accounts for the latest. Planning for the Spring League showcase is already underway. The showcase is a five-day version of the Spring League, which will allow elite professional football talent to get tape and game reps in order to get back into the pro ranks of the sport. The Spring League showcase will take place from June 5th to June 9th in the San Diego, California area. Head to thespringleague.com for more info. Now, let's get to today's interview with two-sport kicking star, Josh Gable. Josh Gable is a 27-year-old kicker out of Kearney, Nebraska. He is one of only a handful of guys who has participated in both of the Spring League's two full seasons to date. He's the only Spring League participant who did not play college football, and that would be because he's already gone pro in one other sport, soccer. Without giving too much more away, let's welcome Josh on a spring forward to delve a little deeper into one of the more interesting people associated with the league. Hey, Alex. Hey, thank you for having me on the podcast. This is, uh, this is uh, pretty cool. I like it. So obviously something we didn't have in your first year, but um, we'll get into football, of course, but let's start with soccer. I mean, the average age of guys that go pro in soccer globally is much younger than any sport we have in the U.S. Um, so what was yeah, high school yeah. like for you? Did you finish high school in the U.S. before your pro soccer career got started? And then where did that career take you? Yeah, I actually did. So I graduated at Kearney High in Kearney, Nebraska uh, in 2009. So, you know, a couple of years back, I uh, graduated at 18. I waited, I want to say, while well, everyone went to, you know, went on to college that August, I waited, I think it was around eight months, and I, uh, you know, took my skills to Europe, and I went to play soccer in Rome for a team called Lazio, and I'm sure you've heard of them, but not too many people, you know, not too many else, anybody doesn't know who they are, but uh, they're a pretty big club in Europe. I would say they're probably the fourth biggest team in Italy. So they're in Serie A, top division. Yes, sir. And then, uh, so so take us through your time in Europe, because there's obviously a big gap between 20 and 27 now. <laughs> yes, sir. So, uh, you know, after I graduated, uh, getting all those accolades, being, you know, one of the best, you know, young high school players in the nation, uh, taking my talents to Europe, I felt, you know, I was very, uh, very confident. Uh, some would say overconfident. I don't know if I was cocky, but I had a lot of skill and I, uh, it's all I worked on while people were in high school, you know, trying to focus on, you know, being the best players in the state, competing against each other. I was, you know, competing against guys that I would watch on TV. So I thought that was my level. And from the get, I was, uh, you know, already, uh, uh, playing as if I was a professional in high school. So the leap was, it, it didn't seem to me like it was that big, but when I went over there, it was, you know, it's, it's, it's very different. And, uh, you learn so much and going to Rome, uh, I'm, I'm glad I went there first because I learned, I learned so much from, you know, uh, you know, the older players, the veterans, the, the players that play, you know, for their, their domestic, their, you know, domestically in other, in other countries and for their national team, just things they picked up and, you know, they kind of handed that to me. Uh, you just learn, you, you learn a lot and you're basically on your own being an American playing in Europe and you have to grow up, uh, opposed to being a college football player, listening to coaches that sp- also speak English, having teammates, you know, you know, over a hundred teammates that also, you know, have the same goal as you, uh, definitely grew up pretty quickly. <laughs> so what, what is it like being an American in, in European soccer? Cause I mean, I, I'm a soccer fan, but let's, you know, liberally say that soccer is fourth or fifth ranked sport in the U S and it's number one, pretty much everywhere else in the world for sure in Europe and especially Italy. Um, is there a stigma tied to you being an American? I mean, what do you have to overcome being from this country and playing over there? Well, you you most definitely have to prove yourself and, you know, they won't do you any favors. They won't um, they won't baby you. They won't give you special treatment until you prove yourself, especially as an American. 
And that was a wall that I ran into a couple of times when I first went there. My first practice, uh, like I was telling you, it was like my first, I would say it was a while, maybe my first three months when I was there, it was a, it was a struggle just, uh, watching the first team practice, even watching the Primavera team, the, uh, the AKA the, the second team, the reserve side very good they were you know they're all as good as me and i wasn't used to seeing that um the reserve team wouldn't even let me take free kicks when i was there um i had to build my way and uh you know kind of uh build a solid foundation you know uh and with that i started you know studying the country and the and the city i really liked it and uh the more i did that the more things fell into place uh, everyone is family oriented over there. So it was very easy to fall in love with the city and, you know, become successful and, you know, just go about my business and earn a spot on the roster and having the first team sign me after those months. And, uh, I really felt like it helped me out. So just from some, what I remember of our conversation in Austin, I mean, one of the reasons why, uh, you are where you are today and pursuing a career in football as you were sort of getting burnt out by the loan process in Europe, um, which isn't really yeah. something we deal with in, in American sports here. Um, you know, you, to, to switch teams, you either get traded or, or you sign somewhere as a free agent. But uh, just quickly explain what, what loans are in European soccer, um, some of the cities that, that you played for uh, when Lazio loaned you out, and then I promise we'll get to the football. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one of the... Uh... I had a short loan spell with um, Standard Liège in Belgium. Uh, and I also went to, I was also loaned to a team called Genk in Belgium and won a championship. Uh, after that, returned back. I thought I was going to play that summer because I was playing preseason with Lazio and, you know, had a pretty good preseason and lost my spot to a Argentinian international. Um, so they sent me back on loan. Um, not, you know, they didn't want to let me go. They sent me back on loan to, uh, the second division called Como Calcio and, uh, they're a pretty good team. Um, at the time they were in the Serie B and, you know, after that I returned and I just felt like, you know, I, I was pretty burnt out with being, you know, on those loan spells, but, um, you know, that I definitely have to make my mind and, you know, either return home and or just, you know, seriously rethink things because, um, you know, just things weren't going the way I wanted. But at the same time, it's you, you don't feel like giving up. You never like giving up is like the last resort. So I was uh, looking into all my options. Now, there's a very obvious connection between soccer and, and football kicking. Um, so yeah. you obviously did make the decision to return home. Um had you ever played football before? Did you play high school football? Had you ever put on a helmet before and kick field goals? I have. I did that in high school. Obviously, uh, you know, making, I think I made all state around, you know, three times. The only year I didn't was when I did not go out my, I didn't go out my junior year because I was selected for the national team pool and I played, you know, for my select team in Nebraska. So, uh, yeah, I, I definitely, uh, I definitely was used to that, but the feeling, I, I you know, it, obviously it was nothing compared to, you know, college football or anything. And, I just didn't. And did you have the opportunity to kick in college if you had chosen that path after high school? I did have the opportunity, yes. I had the, uh, a lot of, uh, let me see, would it be the big, big 10 or big 12 teams? It was just like Oklahoma, um, you know, Texas, Kansas, you know, the surrounding states that, you know, have heard of my name and, you know, they had pretty big leg. Um, and you also had teams like Florida, I want to say UCLA, Princeton was like a really odd team that was there that like gave me a letter. So you come back stateside, um, and your first, uh, experience, uh, on a pro team is with the Iowa Barnstormers, correct? Yes, sir. And that's before your first ever spring league. So, so what's that yep. sort of culture shock like? If there was any, or did you fit right in? Um, yeah, yeah I mean, uh, there was there. It was it was a bit different because you know, knowing nothing about indoor football, 
uh, I obviously thought the field goal posts were, you know, regular size, just kicking indoor. I was like, how hard could this be? I did hear that the fields were like 60 yards before going in, and I didn't know the field goal posts would be only, you know, nine feet, nine feet wide as opposed to 18 feet outside. So I was like, okay, how hard can this be? Let's, you know, let's strap it up. Let's do it. And uh, once I got there, it was like, well, you're going to get hit three times as much as the, an actual kicker does in outdoor football. My coach told me, I was like, okay, like how hard can, okay. Like I won't get hit. I'm pretty fast, you know, whatever. In my first game, I took some knocks. So it set me back a little bit. <laughs> Now, like we said, you're uh, you're one of I think only seven guys to have been in both spring leagues. So uh, you know, after your first uh, indoor season, you headed out to uh, West Virginia to play in the spring league, and then uh, this year you were in Austin. So just talk about the differences. Um, obviously, the spring league gives you an opportunity to kick outdoors, um, but what was the difference between the two spring leagues like for you? Um, you know what I would say. I'd say the second spring league was a lot more talent, obviously, just because there was a lot more guys, uh, a lot more camaraderie. Uh, the coaches, I feel like the coaches second time around, even though they did do good the first time around, the second time around, um, I feel like they were more, you know, personable. They kept track of literally everyone and like what people were doing, which was kind of cool. It smelled like it felt like a, you know, a small college and, you know, the coaches knew you. So uh, every time I'd go somewhere, you know, I'd hear my name being yelled at by a coach and I'd be, I'd be like, cool. Like he knows me. That's awesome. And I'd, you know, that helps you along the way. It's, it's like little things like that, that I didn't pick up on uh, the other spring league that really helped me out this time around. Going back to last summer, after you finished your your first spring league, um, you actually got a call and a tryout with the Patriots. Um, they employed at the time and still do the most accurate kicker in team history in Steven Gostowski. Um, but you got a tryout with the team. You went 29 for 30 um, during That's that great. tryout. You know, Take us through that. You're going from the Iowa Barnstormers to rural West Virginia with the spring league to the Patriots. Yeah, uh, at that time, um, you know, just speaking with my family, we, we all thought things were moving pretty quickly, but I definitely thought it was meant. I thought I was uh, definitely on a good path and I wasn't rushing anything. I felt right. So I think that's why I performed uh, that good when I went down there. And obviously coaches gave me a lot of confidence. They saw, you know, the little amount of film that I put out there, they, they, they've seen it. So um, I already had their trust and all I had to do is go out there and, you know, there's, there's pretty much nothing to lose when you're out there. Uh, you know, and being in New England, I feel like it was amazing. You know, one of the best teams in sports. So uh, they had amazing facilities and the coaches were like top notch. So, um, all I had to do at that point is, you know, do my best and, you know, try as hard as I could to make an impact. So we're recording right now on a Tuesday night, which means that uh, five nights ago was the last spring league game and you actually kicked a 56 yarder in that game. Um, yes. You know, you got interest from the Pats after last season. Can you tell us anything about uh, interest in just five days um, after this one? Yeah, you know, there's there's been a, you know, there's been a few teams or a handful of teams, I should say. Uh, that have you know spoke to my agent uh, Brad Berkowitz. He's advised me not to give too much information out, but there there are a couple teams you know wanting to see me personally and see what I can actually do. I mean I don't know if they haven't seen enough film or uh, what what you know what else they need, but I definitely am willing to prove myself to any team out there that is curious about me. But it, it is nice to know that teams really do take notice of uh, these spring league games and me, you know, getting the opportunity from those games that they've seen. It's 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 been amazing. You know, maybe, maybe a lot of people don't think about it, but, uh, you know, NFL teams don't really carry more than one kicker. So you're actually trying to break through and competing at the shallowest position uh, in, fo in football, certainly, maybe in sports. Um so that really says a lot that, that teams are 
are showing interest right after a, a spring league season and not once but twice for you. Yes, sir. Um, it, you're, you're right. It is very shallowest, uh, one of the shallowest positions, you know, in in sports. And I feel like you have a good kicker on a team and say he kicks for, you know, 11, 12 years in the league. There's some of these guys, it's just really hard to break into, you know, break into the squad just because they're trusted. And, you know, once they find a kicker, it's really hard to, you know, just let him go. And for somebody new to come in and just, you know, take their spot, it's going to take something very special. And I believe I have that quality. Um, I've been trying to prove that over the, you know, last couple of years. So hopefully, uh, hopefully I can put all that together on the field um, and show some of these coaches, you know, my abilities. But uh, I do believe that it's a very hard thing to do. So what you're really saying is that at 27 years old, you're really young for a kicker <laughs> and, and you're ready to, <laughs> to play well into your 40s. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely think um, I, I'm very accurate. I, I think I can become very successful at this. I have a really good shot. Um, there's never been a moment that I've stepped into the field and I'm called upon and I don't feel confident. So that, I feel like that's a very good feeling. Uh, as, as opposed to soccer, there was, you know, a lot of pressure in Europe uh, being an American. But not only that, it's just game situations, penalties, free kicks, a lot of pressure, but at the same time, you know, uh, football, the football side of it, you know, just kicking wise and a smaller amount of duties. I feel like that kind of uh, that kind of helps. Another thing that, you, that you've done to, to help out your career and, and you've coupled this with your digital savviness, um, but you recorded and edited uh, trick shot videos, including one that you did at Kelly Reeve Stadium during the spring league season. Um, you know, obviously juggling and tricks are a big part of soccer, but you've made it part of your football DNA too. When did you start seeing potential in releasing videos like that and, and also seeing that you could do the same thing with a football as you could with a soccer ball? Um, you know what? I, uh, I, I really don't know where that came from. I, I think I was just messing around. Honestly, it came from when I, – I think it came from when um, uh, I was still going through that, you know – transformation i was you know kicking the soccer ball around trying to kick the football around you know doing a little bit of the same things short field goals uh kicked like a 40 yarder um and i felt good after that i was like oh i can you know i can i can really do this and it was when i was kicking the ball through because i only had one ball at the time so i kicked the ball through i want to say it was uh like a 50 yarder i kicked it through the through the field goal I had to run back and get the ball and on my way back I'd like do tricks so I think that's where it like sparked and I was like hey like I, I'd kick it back through the you know back side of the field goal post you know kind of like a crazy way or good up kick or you know juggle the ball then kick it through then you know set it up for my next field goal so I was just like I'm videotaping my field goals right now why don't I like videotape myself doing something like this so it was kind of cool how I put it together, but I, I kind of think that's how it came from. Now you're you're a Nebraska native, and if you look through your Instagram, in addition to uh, you know trick field goal shots, you also see some some snowy shots, some kicking in the snow. Is uh, yeah. is that something you're trying to play up to your advantage, given uh, where you come from and where you practice? Is that something that teams have noticed about you when you've talked to them? I mean, yeah, I, I definitely think so. I. It, when it snows, I don't go in. I'm not. I don't shy away from the, you know, the opportunity to make the most of kicking in the snow. I don't know. I, I guess it makes me more accurate with you know the weather conditions going on. I'm really ready for any uh, any type of weather there is, whether it be you know snow or sleet, you know rain. Nebraska has literally everything. Uh, you know, as long as it's you know not. <laughs> There's not a tornado. I'm, I'm sure I can kick in that too. But at the same time, I feel like that's helped me, and that also demonstrates that I can, you know, uh, kick in any type of weather. Now, you, so you're, you're passionate about uh, sports, obviously, but you've got you've got some interest outside of the athletic realm as well. One thing that I'm especially interested in is your sneaker customization, and you seem to be, uh, you know, coupling your passion for art with sneakers uh, together. Uh, take us through that and and what how sneaker customization entered into your expertise. Thank you for bringing this up. I'm actually uh, I actually have a pair of shoes right here. Yeah, um, you can you can put a plug in here too if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. So I, I'm a, I'm a big you know uh, I'm really big on style. I really like art, and uh, best way to for me to put it together is uh, putting art on you know shoes or clothing. So I do do fashion illustration and graphic design, but I also uh you know I paint shoes and. At first, I didn't think, you know, it was just like for myself. I, I didn't think much of it, but uh, posted a few things on Facebook and Instagram and people started liking my customized shoes and um, like my last pair of shoes I like made. It was like second to last. I started making like Supremes out of, you know, the bands that I would get. Um, and a guy from actually New York, he he hit me up on my Instagram and was like, hey, like, how much are you selling these for? And I told him, uh, well, I told him the price, but he legitly was just like, I'll, I'll buy these for like four ninety nine, like pretty much five hundred dollars, uh, because I guess Supreme's really big in uh, yeah, in sure New York, is. and I was just sure like, is. that's insane. Yeah, that that would be that'd be awesome. Like that's the I guess that's my asking price too. Then, um, so after that, uh, yeah, obviously I didn't you know keep it at that price, but kept it you know at a lower price. And, you know, more people, more kids were like, hey, this is my uh, this is my shoe size. Could you do this shoe size and I'd order the shoes? And, you know, it kind of kind of sparked. And uh, it hasn't been like a full time thing, but I, I just do it, you know, uh, you know, as a hobby, kind of, you know, kind of on the side. But uh, it'd be really cool to make something more of it in the future. Well, so from from Spring League highlights to trick shots to sneaker customization, we've talked about your Instagram a lot. Uh, you might as well just tell the people where they can find you. <laughs> All right. So my Instagram name is okay at Josh Gable. That's Josh G A B L E. And uh, yeah, feel free to follow. That seems like I a, definitely follow back. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a good place to end. I want. I do want to. My apologies to Carney, Nebraska. I let off with the incorrect pronunciation, and uh, you know, don't hate me. Please keep listening to Spring Forward. Um, but. Appreciate Josh joining us, and uh, you know, best of luck to him in his his NFL dreams. Go go pro in two sports. Yes, sir. Thank you, Alex. That will bring us to the end of episode twelve. Best of luck to Josh as he battles for an NFL kicking job. Head to thespringleague.com for the latest on what's going on with the Spring League, including information about the showcase. You can follow the Spring League on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at the Spring League. You can follow me on Twitter at AG Stick and on Instagram at This Is My Other IG. All music was provided to the Spring Forward podcast by Joshua Rosner. We'll be back with another episode next week. Later. Later.